Louise not on yet, is she? Oh. Um, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Are you there? Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you. All right. Good to see you too. Uh, wonderful. So uh, let's go and use your prayer. Uh, we are here uh, with another uh, um I'm sorry, another mediumship literature group. Uh, we are here every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, reading, um, um, reading books related to mediumship. We are currently finishing the book, uh, a Gosp The Gospel According with Spiritism by Allan Kardec. And uh, we are going to continue where we stopped last week, which is chapter 28. Um, and everybody uh, is welcome to join us. It's, a, it's free. Um, there's no charge. So if you'd like to join us live, um, you can contact me through uh, Revenant, my, uh, my book on fa um, face Facebook, my page on Facebook called Revenant or my, my website, revenant.world, and I will uh, contact you back and add you to our group. So you can uh, participate in the discussions live and read with us. Um, so let's do our initial prayer to start reading. Dear God, thank you very much for this day, for this wonderful opportunity to be here together, uh, learning from you, from precious, um, Mess, uh, pre precious lessons directly from spirit and also understanding better uh, the uh, in teachings from Jesus um, uh, through the gospel and ex explained and uh, better understood um, through uh, the help from spirits in this book, Gospel According with Spiritism. Thank you very much for the lives of everyone in here. Help us to uh, learn the things we need to learn and to apply in our daily lives. Thank you very much for your unconditional love and help. Amen. Mm. Okay, so we are going to continue where we stopped. So we are catching up on the, the part called Spiritist Meetings. Number four from chapter 28. Who would like to start reading for us? Is it um, give us this day our daily bread, or is that a different part? No, we are, we already have finished the um, gospel. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is on, on my version is page 410. Is after we finished the whole uh, Lord's Prayer. So give us this day our daily bread is part of the Lord's Prayer. So it's after that in a section that's called Spiritist Meaning Me Meetings. Whatever two or three are gathered in my name, there there I will be in their midst. Matthew eighteen twenty. It's page two eighty three for us, Elizabeth. In the PDF. David, did you find it? Still looking. I. I okay. I have a different book and a different. Completely different. <laughs> okay. Pages. I think we all have. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will start reading. Uh, did uh, unless you found it, Elizabeth? We found it. <laughs> Would you like to to read? <laughs> It's okay, you can go ahead. <laughs> All right, so in the meantime, look look for it, everybody, if, uh, everybody, so you can follow, and then somebody else can continue afterwards. All right, 
spiritist meetings. Whatever two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in their midst. Matthew 18, verse 20. Five, introduction. To be gathered in Jesus' name does not mean that it is enough to be gathered physically, but to be gathered spiritually through a communion of intentions and thoughts for the good. Then Jesus is found in the midst of the assembly. Either he, he himself or pure spirit will represent him. Spiritism enables us to understand in which uh, in which, in which way spirits can be amongst us. They are amongst us with their fluidic or spiritual body um, and with a, uh, an appearance that we would recognize if they were to make themselves visible. The higher their, their position in hierarchy, the greater their power of radiation. It is in this in this way that they possess the gift of ubiqu ubiquity and can be at several places at the same time. All they need for, for this is emission of their thoughts. Through their words, Jesus wanted to, wanted to show the effect of unity and fraternity. It is not the largest or, or smallest number per se, that attracts him, since uh, instead of two or three persons, he could have said 10 or 20. Rather, it is the sentiment of charity animating each one with respect to each others. Therefore, to accomplish this, just two are enough. However, if the, these two persons each pray on their own accord, uh, I'll, I'll request if you can mute your microphones so you have interference. If you want to ask questions or participate in the discussion afterwards, you can uh, unmute, but... Uh, if you just slide the page, Shiz, you should be... What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, you're muted. Oh, sorry, I was just trying to explain to, share, to Shez how to um, turn her microphone off. Mm -hmm. Has she got it? Yes, yeah, I, I turned it off. All right, okay. so thank you. Uh, okay, let's continue. Um, However, if these two persons each pray on their own accord, then even if they, are, they address Jesus, there is no communion of thoughts between them, especially if they are not motivated by a sentiment of mutual benevolence. By the same token, if they re, re, uh, regard each other with prejudice, hatred, envy, or jealousy, the fluidic currents of their thoughts repel rather than unite them in a common impulse of sympathy. Then they are not gathered in Jesus' name. Jesus is only a pretext, pretext for the gathering or not the true motives. See chapter 27, number nine. This does not imply that Jesus is deaf to the voice of one person alone. If he did not say, I will come to anyone who calls me, it is because he demands above all sense, above all else, love for one, one's neighbor, which may be better displayed in a group than in isolation. And because any individualistic sentiment repels it. Hence, it follows that if in a large gathering, only two or three persons are united in the hearts through the sentiment of true charity, while the others isolate themselves and, and concentrate on selfish and worldly ideas. Jesus will be uh, the former and not the later. 
it is not therefore the simultaneously of the simultaneity of the words hymns or outward acts that comprise the gathering in Jesus name but the co communion of thoughts in uh, conform uh, conformance with the spirit of charity personalized in Jesus see chapter 10 number 7 or 8 and 8 chapter uh, 27 number 2 to 4 such should be the character of serious spiritist meetings those in which the concord of good spirits is uh, de desired six prayer at the start of the meeting we pray to the almighty lord god to send us good spirits to assist us to keep away spirits who might induce us to error and to grant us to delight uh, to the delight necessary to uh, distinguish truth from falsehood. Also keep away incarnate or discarnate malevolent spirits who might try to sow discord among us and lead us away from charity and love towards our neighborhood neighbors. If any try to come here, do not allow them access to any of our hearts. Good spirits who come to teach us, render us amenable to our our counsels. Keep from keep from us any thoughts of selfishness, pride, envy, or jealousy. Inspire us to be indulgent and benevolent towards our fellow beings, whether present or absent, friendly or hostile. Finally, enable us to recognize your salutary influence through the sentiments that animate us. Give to the mediums who you entrust to transmit your teachings the holy awareness of the mandate that has been entrusted to them and the seriousness of the acts they are about to perform so that they may employ the necessary fervor and concentration to do so. If in, in this gatherings, if, if in this gathering there are people who have been attracted by sentiments other than those of the good, open their eyes to the light and forgive them just as we forgive them if they have come with malevolent intentions. We especially pray to the spirits of the name our spirits guide to assist us and watch over us. Seven, at the end of the meeting, we give thanks to, uh, to good spirits who have wished to come and communicate with us. We pray that they will help us to put in practice the teachings that they have given and, and will help each, each of us each one of us, as we leave this place and feel strengthened in a practice of the good and love towards our neighbor. We also desire that their teachings will be useful for suffering, ignorant and wicked spirits who may have attended this meeting and, and for whom we improve, we implore God's mercy. Any comments or Questions so far? Yes or no? I guess I do have a little question. Um, okay. What if you forget to do the prayer um, and you? Um, Everything is about the intention, right? So remember that what we said in the beginning, uh, like in the previous chapters, uh, when we read about prayers, uh, the prayer is not necessarily something formal that we do out loud or we do like uh, in any specific way. Is much more about our intention. Sometimes we don't pray, we forgot to pray, but our hearts are 100% connected with the, the good intentions of doing good things to ask, you know, God's protection to ask that everything we do is for the, the best 
and the hires of everyone involved and, and to help others and to help our planet. So if the intention is there, it's fine. Uh, so the prayer is much more for us than for anybody else, for God or for whoever. The prayer is to help us to connect with that intention. Because sometimes we, we think, that, oh, okay, I'm, I'm doing this for a long time. Uh, you know, I have uh, participated in, in many uh, spiritual groups or uh, any churches, many churches, and I'm a, you know, a believer in God, and I have done uh, mediumship for a while. I don't need to pray. We are always vulnerable, always vulnerable for our, because of our own, you know, problems. We, we are not perfect. Nobody in this planet is perfect. We may, you know, be in a bad state emotionally, stressed or angry at someone who, like, I don't know, you know, did something bad for us, or someone to cut us in traffic, or, you know, worried about a bill that we, we need to pay, and our energy is not there, right? It's very easy to get lose track of our higher the levels of being a uh, higher vibration and when we we are not vibrating in a higher vibration not that we need to be angels no otherwise god would not allow us to be mediums we are all imperfect but at least we if we are at least we, uh, connected with the intention and have love in our hearts in that moment we are protected right so we don't have the risk to say something that's going to be harmful for anyone, uh, don't uh, give a reading that's not appropriate or uh, interpret it in a way that's harmful or even attract a spirits that is not good for us or for them, for anybody in the group. So the intention is really important to have at least a little moment of, okay, God, uh, I'm going to the group now, please help me, protect me help me to grow and develop, you know, everything I do there is for your, the highest and the best of everyone. That's enough. A couple of seconds, right? And then we, of course, we need to focus on that, right? It's not can be empty words, even in our own minds, because we can't say empty words in our minds too, right? <laughs> but we need to really be sincerely wanting that and meaning that. And then they, they help us. They help us. They know each one of us in depth. They know our intimate self. So they help us where we are. And um, so I don't know if I answered your question, Elizabeth. Yeah? <laughs> Any other question or comments? All right, so who would like to continue the reading uh, for the mediums? Um, I'll go ahead and, and read. Um, okay, number eight for the mediums. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Acts 2, 17 and 18. Nine preface. God wishes that the light shines for all men and that the voices of the spirits penetrate to all parts so that everyone may obtain proof of immortality. It is within this objective in mind that the spirits manifest themselves in all parts of the globe and that mediumship is revealing itself in people of all ages and all conditions, in men and in women, in children and in old people. This is one of the signs that the predicted times have arrived. Have arrived. 
in order to know the things of the visible world, to discover the secrets of material nature, God has given man bodily vision, the senses, and special instruments. With a telescope, his eyes reach into the vastness of space. With a microscope, he discovers the world of infinite minuteness. And to be able to penetrate the invisible world, he has given man mediumship. Mediums are interpreters who have undertaken to transmit to mankind the teachings of the spirits, or rather, they are the material origins in which the spirits avail themselves so as to be able to express themselves to man intelligently. They fulfill a sacred mission, saying that the aim is to open up the horizons of eternal life. The spirits come to instruct man as to his destiny so that he may be led towards the path of goodness and not to save him from material work which must be fulfilled in his word for his advancement nor for the furthering of his ambition and covetousness. This is something which must be clearly understood by mediums so that they will not make bad use of their faculty. Those who fully understand the seriousness of the mandate with which they have been invested will carry out this duty religiously. Their conscience will condemn them if by any sacrilegious act they transform into a distraction or amusement for themselves or for others these faculties which were given to them for a serious purpose, which is that of placing them in communication with beings from the other world. As interpreters for the teachings of the spirits, mediums should play a very important part in the moral transformation that is in process. The services they are able to offer will be in accordance with the correctness of the orientation they have given to their faculty because those who follow an incorrect pathway cause more harm than good to the cause of spiritism. More than one person will delay their progress due to the, to the unfortunate impression these mediums produce. Therefore, because of this, all mediums will have to give an account of the use to which they have put their faculty, which was given to them for the purpose of doing good to their fellow creatures. The medium who desires to be constantly helped by good spirits will have to work hard towards self-betterment. Those who wish their faculty to grow and be enriched must therefore enrich themselves morally and abstain from all that can turn them aside from their providential purpose. If sometimes good spirits make use of an imperfect medium, it is in order to give good advice with, with which they try to make them take the road to goodness. If, however, they meet hardened hearts and their advice is not listened to, they will leave and the field will then be free for the evil spirit. Experience has proved that on the part of those who do not take advantage of the advice received from the good spirits, communications, which initially showed some brilliance, will little by little degenerate and finally fall into error, either in the wording or because ridiculous, which are incontestable signs of the retreat of the good spirits. To a obtain the assistance of the good spirits and to remove the lying and frivolous ones must be the aim to which all serious mediums to join forces and without which mediumship becomes a sterile faculty, even capable of causing detriment to the one who possesses it, since it can cause the cause of a dangerous obsession. Any medium who understands their duty is not proud of a faculty that does not belong to them, seeing that it may be taken away, will always attribute the good things they receive to God. 
if their communications receive praise, they will not become vain because they know that these are independent of the personal merit, of their personal merit. They will give thanks to God for having allowed the good spirits to be able to manifest through their intermediary. If there is occasion for criticism, they're never offended because the communications are not their own work. On the contrary, they recognize in their inner selves that they were not able to be good instruments and do not possess all the necessary qualities which would obstruct interference from backward spirits. Therefore, take care to acquire these qualities and employ by means of prayer that your strength does not fail. Um, 10, prayer. Almighty God, permit the good spirits to come and help me in the communication that is solicited. Protect me from the presumption of judging myself to be safe from evil spirits, from the pride which may induce me to err with respect to the value of what I receive, from the sentiments which are the opposite of charity towards other mediums. If I fall into error, inspire someone to alert me of this fact and give me the humility that will enable me to accept the deserved criticism and to recognize that the advice the good spirits wish to give through me is not only addressed to others, but primarily to myself. If I am tempted to abuse in whatever form the faculty whose bestowal you approved or to become proud of it, I ask that you take it back rather than it be permitted to stray, to stay, stray from its providential objective, which is for the good of all and for my own moral better. Any questions or comments? Darcy? Um, so is this saying that uh, if you try to make money from it or become famous, um, from your mediumship skills that eventually you're going to fail because that that just doesn't agree with what I see like Lisa Williams and uh, Gordon Higginson and James Van Prague like all of those seem to be doing pretty well so I I don't understand if that's going to happen how come it hasn't happened to them is it because they're teaching or well, uh, I, I am not here to judge anyone uh, because it's not my place to judge anyone. And I, I don't, I'm not in people's minds. Um, everything is about intention, right? And we also see politicians that are very corrupt doing very well and succeeding for the longest time uh we see people that are uh in society people that are sociopaths that are really successful and i'm not comparing those people with those mediums i'm just trying to clarify the fact that sometimes when people are doing well doesn't mean that they're gonna do well forever uh so God give us everything we have is God given. And we are all accountable for what we do with what we have. If we are fortunate to be beautiful or to be healthy, to have a family, a happy family, to be a majority, not, uh, to have a shelter, to have food to eat, to um, to have intelligence, to have uh, any any gifts. Each one of us are accountable to respond what we have done with what we have received. And this accountability is not necessarily in this life. It's sometimes in future lives. I have heard, for example, some people that I helped in my office, 
uh, complaining about their family, for example, that some of them had one really bad parent and the parent was really a bad person, like a sociopath and like uh, was abusive with everyone every in every way possible. And the mother was the loving one who took care of the kids and he, he, she suffered as well, but she managed to get out of the relationship and protect the kids and take, take care of the kids. And the mother died before the father. And the kids were revolted. It's like, why, why my mother died before my father? My father deserved to die before. He was the bad one. Sometimes God gives, gives us more chances exactly because we are the ones who deserve more chances. I mean, we are the ones that messed up. And in this life, when we are incarnated, right, in this life or any other planet or in past life or future lives, the incarnated times are the times that we have to grow and to learn and to improve the mistakes we have done before. So God gives us all opportunities to fix whatever we messed up before and to grow to the next levels because we is a continuous process right from when we all started very low level very primitive creatures back 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 then like i don't know how many millions of years ago we all started that and we all going to grow sooner or later some faster some slower to the level of perfection so that's why like we should not judge in anyone like if someone is doing well and we we feel that they are not doing the right thing it's not up to us to judge them let let god judge them sometimes they are doing something that we think is bad but their intention is wonderful and they are helping a lot of people and their heart is pure that's what matters it's not about us to judge, but would I feel comfortable making a fortune doing mediumship? No, this is my consciousness. It's because mediumship is not a faculty that we have acquired, it's a gift from God. Everything we have is a gift, but especially mediumship because the work is done almost 100% by spirits all the wisdom that's shared, all the messages, who is there to communicate is a spirit, is not the medium. The medium is not supposed to be an entertainer. He's not supposed to be a performer. He's not supposed to be a, a star. A medium is supposed to be a humble instrument of the spiritual world. If they make money, and do this at the same time good for them it's, it is not my job to judge my job is to take care of me what i do and according with my consciousness and according with my intentions and that's pretty much it so thank you you're welcome so uh anybody else have questions or comments No, that's how I understand. I understood it too, Darcy. When when I read that, I didn't like my brain didn't go there. It went towards more like like what are your what kind of messages are you delivering? Are you using this for your own self advancement, or are you doing it in the highest purpose? And I think if you're doing the latter, I mean, even if you're getting paid, like Sandra said, you know, that's that's for them to deal with and that's that's like maybe they're doing a lot of of uh you know light work and they get paid for it and maybe it balances out in the end and that's for them and and that's for themselves to to figure out if they're okay with that 
Yeah, and it's not just about them being okay, it's about God's judgment, right? It's like, ultimately it's that. Because we can justify anything wrong that we have done, and that doesn't make it right, right? Yeah, I meant more like between them and God, <laughs> for sure. That I absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. All right, uh, we can continue uh, prayers for oneself. Uh, let's see if we have time. Um, if I may speak for a second, I think what you need to be aware of also is those particular mediums, what you see on TV is set up because they don't wish to have their name damaged. So they actually set all that up. If you look into it, you'll find out that people in the audience are paid. They're actors. Sometimes. So, not, not all, but sometimes. I did research into the ones you spoke about, and it, that's what came back from them, that it's set up. They are good mediums. Don't get me wrong. They're doing the right thing. But when you see it on TV, yeah. they've got people in there so that they don't dirty their name, basically if that makes sense. But I've watched like Tony, um, Tony Stockwell and uh, uh, Andy one. Bing is actually my, my mentor that I'm working with. And he's absolutely amazing. And it's, he's read me out of a crowd. And so I do know that he- Yes, yeah, sorry, I just realized you're, right? you're in another country. So that's probably why it's not, I'm probably referring to the ones we've got here on TV and they actually, they're paid yeah. shows. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. And I on TV is a different, whole different ball game. But I yeah, mean, that's the ones all you I see mean, in yeah. person, right? Oh, no, no, no. I, I just meant the TV shows that you see. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things and sometimes uh, there's people that, set up sometimes people start with good intentions then they get corrupted in the middle of the way uh or you know, uh, there's all sorts of stuff but in another hand uh i i should say that all those popular mediums nowadays those tv shows um again i'm not judging any of them bad or good um i'm just saying that this one way or the other is benefiting the uh, spread for, of spiritism is, is benefiting the awareness of people who otherwise would not even know that this, those kind of phenomena exists and would not even know that life after that, uh, you know, would be skeptical, skeptical or so they make, at least make people curious, they ask then they may look for someone in person, a direct, uh, you know, experience. And that helps uh, people to, uh, because again, uh, spiritism is not about converting anyone, right? It's not like other religions you need to be converted to Christianism, or converted to whatever, Muslim. Uh, uh, spiritism is not about converting anyone. It's about uh, spreading awareness from about our reality as human beings, our spiritual reality, the, the fact that we all are spirits in essence, and also the fact that there's life after that. And because of that, we need to have a different relationship with our own lives. It, uh, it brings a purpose to our lives. When we understand that the purpose that we of our lives, of all of us, despite our differences, is to grow, is to evolve. That life is a continuous and uh, the evolution that we see in nature, that we learn in, through science, uh, is applicable to our spiritual reality. And, and that's, that's the beauty of spiritism. Doesn't matter which religion you are, you can continue on your religion. Sometimes people are not even religious. They don't want to describe themselves as religious. That's totally fine too. And you can still experience and 
and benefits from the teachings of spiritism uh, and communications from from the spirits through through the medium. So one way or the other is helping. Uh, so I applaud them for that, and I think is a is a wonderful thing that they are doing. Uh, and you know how each one of them are doing their own things is not up to me to judge. Can I ask a question? Sure. A question. Sorry, my microphone was muted. I didn't realize I'd done it. Um, before when you were talking about like, you know, that we shouldn't really charge um, for mediumship, if you're not charging like huge amounts of money and your intention's pure that, you know, you want to help people and you want to deliver these messages, you know, to comfort and to heal people, then like surely that's okay then like to charge, isn't it? Well, again, like, for example, where, where I come from, in Brazil, uh, spiritism is 100% free. People can I'm not saying you have to all the time, but I'm just asking, like, you know, because it, it does take, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's about all the, about the intention, dear. It's like talk with your guides, uh, develop this pure relationship with your guides, and ask God, ask for signs, ask for signs. And God's going to answer you if it's okay for you, depending on your reality, your intention to charge X, Y, and Z. Uh, ask, ask God directly. Uh, but the thing is, the idea is about for us to have in mind is that mediumship is not a career. It's the same as charging for a hug or charging for a prayer or charging for you know, uh, a smile. We cannot charge for those things. If we cannot, if you can don't have to give for free, don't give it because otherwise it's going to be fake. If someone is paying me to give a hug, is my hug going to be sincere? No, I'm doing my obligation. I'm going to be a performer. I'm going to be an actor. And I can give the most warm hug ever if I want to be a good professional hugger, <laughs> let's say, you know, but it's not going to have any meaning for the person that's receiving. So that's what we need to be focused is that, okay, what I'm giving. At in the moment that I'm paid, uh, like donation is a different story because you say you you give what you do like you don't stipulate a price and then it's a different story but also don't make people uh uncomfortable if they don't have anything to give uh I was just really curious, like, you yeah. know, when, because I mean, I do, I read for free at the moment, but like, I would like to charge something small, like not all the time, but. In America yeah. and in Europe, everybody charges, everybody charges. And it's okay for them. I, again, I'm not, I, I have paid for me just to read for me. When I ask for a reading and I know they pay, they charge, I pay. I don't criticize them. I pay. I want that person to give me a reading because I like them. I pay, but I don't charge anyone. But again, I don't do this full time on purpose because I have bills to pay. I have, I'm a solo provider for my family. And so I have bills to pay. So I don't do mediumship full time because of that. Because my consciousness would not be, I don't feel comfortable. I would be okay accepting donations if people voluntarily want to contribute. That's okay. Is there thank you? Is there a way to thank? That's totally fine. But for me to charge, I don't feel comfortable. But I, again, I'm not condemning anyone here. The most I, I'm the sorry. Most, I thought you'd the most important <laughs> thing we need to internalize 
is always our intention and always our understanding that we are humble instruments of the spirit. It's not us who does X, Y, and Z. It's not the medium that's good or bad. It's the spirit who is communicating through them. Sometimes there are, I'm not going to say names here, but everybody has Netflix, right? Yeah. <laughs> everybody have pro pro probably saw documentaries out there about some specific mediums, right? So I'm not going to say names. But sometimes a medium can be extremely evil and has such bad intention. Again, I'm not say, I'm talking about any of those okay. people that you mentioned, Darcy. I'm just making comparisons, like in general, because we sometimes people judge their puriness or their, you know, how good of pure spirits they are, who good medium they are based on their readings, the, the quality of their readings or the cures that they perform, right? Cure, the healings that they bring. So I sort of disagree. Evil spirits, um, evil spirits can do good too. I've too been doing readings for years and I do charge. And what's happened with me, as I go along, the more people I do, the more spiritual activity I'm seeing with my eyes. And animals, spirit animals, everything, they've all come to me the more I do and I charge. I do charge, but I've put probably six hours into each reading, a lot of work, and those people keep coming back. I don't charge ridiculous amounts, mm -hmm. but I do charge for the actual time I put in. Mm -hmm. And only good has come. The other side of that, I always set my intention right. for the good, like you were saying, for the good, and don't allow anything other than love and light beams to come through okay. and because I do this I've never ever had a bad beam but the other side of that they are up so if you're going to be rude and nasty and poke at them they will retaliate yes mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and and but uh just completing what I, I was uh, starting to say uh uh, bad spirits also do good. I'm not talking about you, Chess, or any other. Yeah, no, no, no. No, <laughs> no. no. Uh, but just saying, like, sometimes there's mediums that has bad intentions. They don't yes. say, it, they don't say, it, but they do, and they they take advantage. For example, there are mediums, documentaries out there who have raped people that came for help to help them. They have True. killed people who opposed to them. They they had the intention to have power and to yes. be rich. their intention was exclusively to be rich and be have power. Yes, that, that's to use their power. And then, but they did a lot of good, right? So bad spirits can do good too. That's what I'm. We need to be attentive. The, the uh, result does not define or does not define the quality of the spirits that they channel. There are there is a church that I'm not gonna say names either because they became very very powerful, revengeful. There is a church that started in Brazil, not in Chile, but the evangelical. Church. The guy was um, uh, was not a religious person when he started the, the church. He wanted to start the church to make money, to make money. There's a lot of churches like that, isn't Absolutely. there? Absolutely, there's a lot. And but there, some of them uh, starts with good intentions and they go through their head. But this guy specifically started his church to make money as a business, as a business. So 
I, I think I mentioned that I want I, I once went to that church to study like I was in in, in um, college and I was uh, in the course of sociology we can pick up we need to pick up a team uh, related to some social things that was in the media and study so I picked up this specific phenomena of prophet churches. Uh, and then I went to that church who was the most like prominent at that time to study. And there was prices for everything. If you wanted a uh, pray, a uh, simple prayer is was one price. If you want a, a prayer to cure cancer was a very expensive prayer uh, price. If you want a prayer to reconcile your marriage was a different price, uh, do you know? Uh, I don't know how people believe that, that there's like spells and prayers to get your ex-lover back or to cure cancer. Like they must be so like grief struck and or depressed to like actually believe that. I know. God, God is, is powerful to do that. God is possible to have healing through prayers, but not like this. Like we can pray ourselves, yeah. right? Each one of us can pray. We can gather together to help each other. It's like my friend has cancer. Let's okay. Let's uh, you know all our friends get together to pray for them. Don't need to charge. Um, so, but just an example of how people can corrupt anything, including spirituality, any any kind of spiritual practice. Uh, it doesn't mean that spirituality or religion or or mediumship is corrupt. No. Is all about each one's consciousness, each one's, uh, you know, uh, decision and intentions. So, and I'm just emphasizing that because each one of us has this responsibility and we can sleep off at any, any moment through a corrupt path at any moment. It can be like little things or can be a big deal that we do. But any of us, so it's important that we all be vigilant in our intentions and every single day we pray that God help us to use our abilities to the highest and the best of everyone we are working for and now for our own spiritual growth, not personal growth, and for uh, an altruistic uh, cause not for selfish reasons right so if we every single day we are connected with this intention with this uh truth and we don't get lost in any in any mean outside of that we are good so and and also observe uh the qualities of the readings or the advices that is given uh, uh, if the person is, you know, creating like good spirits, never gossip, for example, good spirits never put us against each other. Even when we are in the midst of a very bad injustice, they would give us advices to protect ourselves. Like, for example, if someone is plotting like to murder you, uh, and you don't know, and you ask spirits like, uh, you know, I don't know what to do with my life right now. Okay, I have these decisions to make. I don't know if I should stay here or move or whatever. And for your safety, you should move. Your spirits know that you should move. They are not going to say, listen, this person is trying to kill you. You should move. Otherwise, they are not going to tell you that. But they are going to say, yes, you should move. Period. They say the sufficient information to protect you, but they don't gossip. Uh, so just one example of these things that we need to be aware when we to judge the, uh, you know, the things that the devices we received either directly, because sometimes we can channel low spirits, right? And uh, also from a reading from someone else's me, uh, readings. So the love and the harmony, uh, compassion, 
are the, the ways that high level spirits work. We also need to work to function in this kind of mode, motive in order to be instruments of the highest level of spirits and not get trapped. Especially now we are in a moment that more and more we, our planet is going through like a moment of truth, a moment of purification. And we are being tested. All of us are being tested all the time in, for our own growth, for our own evolution. So we need to kind of be aware of, okay, what, what's going on right now? Why I went to this experience? Why ha this happened to me today? What's going to happen if I make that decision or that decision based on what happened today? This is help me going to help me to grow and help others to grow, or is this going to deviate me from my highest level? So all the time we are being tested and it's important that we remember that we, as mediums, we are sponges, we are sponges. We absorb everything good and bad. So we need to be very attentive to be, have the best intentions ever and to be responsible with what we do with the abilities we have in our daily lives, including. All right, so let's do our final prayer because we are over our time. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the readings uh, and the lessons from uh, spirits through um, this uh, book, The Gospel According with Spiritism. Help us to put in practice these things we learned and to overcome any obstacles, any difficulties we have. Help us to clarify our minds in those difficult times, full of, conf full of confusion and f uh, full of uh, problems in every source. Help us to be uh, clear through you, like to, to have clarity directly through you and this way to grow and to be closer to you and bring healing to those around us. Help us to be instruments of delight everywhere we go. Um, thank you for your unconditional love. Amen. Mm. All right, so um, thank you very much for coming. Everybody that would like to continue our next group is welcome. Uh, for those who are watching us from home, uh, we are going to be back next Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Everybody's welcome to join us live um just contact me through my facebook page revenant or my website revenant.world and i'll be happy to add you it's free of charge and uh you all are welcome to join us in our live discussions thank you very much and i hope you have a good week bye